I am Conrad Santer, living in a changing world with the changing people with the changing times. I am presenting the unchangeable Christ. Today I want to talk to you on another subject again that's about angels. And welcome to Glory TV viewers around the world. May you stay blessed and stay tuned as we get to talk about angels. Who are angels? Well, the Bible declares in the book of Genesis chapter 1, God says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the word, if you look at the Greek, um, uh, the Hebrew uh, word, in the beginning, the Bible says, in the beginning, in other words, it's the word, in the deathless past. In the deathless past, or in eternity past, God, meaning the word God is the word Elohim. Now, Elohim, it's plural. Everything in the Hebrew language that ends with the word Him, it's kind of like in English. When it ends with an S, that means it's more than one. So, in the beginning, the Bible there says, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, Elohim. In the deathless past. So if you read like this, Genesis 1, it will say, in the beginning, in the deathless past, Elohim, meaning gods, with an A at the end. So it will be gods, gods, with an S. So you, you won't say God, like single. You would say gods, plural, meaning more than one. Now, for those of you who struggle with the Trinity, right there in Genesis chapter 1, if you read the original Hebrew there, it says, in the beginning, in the deathless past, Elohim, which is God's. Why God's? With an S at the end, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Right there in Genesis, in the beginning of the Word of God, we have the Trinity right there. So it says, in the beginning, in the deathless past, God's, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, created. Now the word create is the word bara, meaning it brought out of nothing. He brought out of nothing the heavens. Now the heavens, it says, Shamahim. Now, Shamahim again, it's plural, it ends with him. So it doesn't say heaven, it says heavens with an S at the end. So it means the heavens, not one, but it says plural, that means more than one. Now, I'm not a logician, but I know that when uh, somebody uses a word, something they use a plural, that it means it's more than one. So it says there, in the beginning, in the deathless past, okay, uh, gods, which is Elohim, created brought out of nothing the heavens and the earth now the word heaven is plural meaning our atmosphere so it, it if it means plural now the word of god talks about uh, i think it was paul he says i was caught up in the third heaven now look at this if there is a third logic tells me there must be the first there must be the second so what is our first heaven the first our atmosphere right now second where the celestial uh, beings are, the second, where the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness exist, the third, where God dwells. Now, when it comes to operation, devils or demons that don't operate in the realms of God, in other words, in the third heaven, because that's where God dwells. So demons operate in the realms of man, in our realm right now, here, in our realm, and then in their realm, which is the realm of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, never in the realm of God. Now, angels of heaven, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Angels of heaven, they operate in the realms of God, in the realms of the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, and in our realm. Therefore, God can send an angel from heaven into the second where the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wicked spirits are like remember what happened many years ago to uh daniel when he was praying and it came to pass that the angel which is the prince of Persia, in the third in the second heaven was holding on to the answer but as daniel continued to pray it came to pass that he had a breakthrough he came to their first heaven, which is our atmosphere, to give the answer to Daniel. What do you learn from that? Well, it tells you that as a believer, when you are praying and things seem to be so insurmountable, you seem not to have answers, I want you to know this. Don't give up. You have to continue praying. Because when Daniel started to pray, when the angel of the Lord came, the angel of the Lord came and he says, the very day you started to pray, God had given you an answer. But because of the Prince of Persia was holding me. Now think about this. All right. If angels if devils if spirits if malevolent spirit wicked spirits can stop an angels who lives in the third heaven where god dwells what more you and me we've never been to heaven we are right here on earth 
But these demons, their principalities and powers of darkness, they stopped an angel who came from God. And then it came to pass that the Lord Almighty sent angel Michael. Now, you don't mess around with Michael. Michael is an angel of war. When Michael came, destroyed that principality, that power of darkness, and therefore the answer came to Daniel. What am I saying? I'm saying whenever you are praying and things seem to be so hard, you don't seem to have answers, don't give up. Many of us, we give up so easily when we are praying, but continue praying. There might be a war that is just waging. There's a war raging up in the spirit realm. As you continue praying, the Lord Almighty is going to send angels of war to destroy the powers of darkness so you can have your answer to your prayer. Never give up. So now, angels of heaven, they're heavenly bound demons that earthly bound so angels of heaven can operate in our realm in the realm of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and in the realms of god demons can only operate in our realm where people are and in their realm never in the realm of god because the day when christ died on the cross heaven was shut down all those angels that fell it is shut down to them the devil cannot receive salvation the devil cannot repent and be reconciled to god it is impossible for him he cannot be forgiven he cannot come and ask for forgiveness today and repent and come back to god why because it is shut for him when christ died on the cross two thousand years ago the heaven is shut for the devils and demons and principalities and powers of darkness they are destined to go to the lake of fire and this is why today that demons and powers of darkness they're working so hard in order to get more people to go with them to the lake of fire now remember the bible declares that god did not create uh, uh, hell for you hell was created for the devil and his angels the opposer satan the uh, adversary it was created for him but because of your disobedience you're going to go to hell hell was not created for you it's not the place for you why would you want to go to the place that was not created for you god created heaven for you he wants you to be with him in heaven forever hell was for the devil and his angels but because of your disobedience and you like the worldly things you like what satan is offering therefore you're going to end up in hell and hell is not a good place ladies and gentlemen i've heard a lot of people talk about hell they say hell is going to be nice because of the musicians who be there you know uh, uh somebody was saying oh actually michael is going to be there playing music there's only one song in hell and the only song that is there that People sing in hell is water, 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 water. It's going to be torment. So don't go there. Just obey God. When you obey God, you're going to go to heaven. When you accept him as your personal savior, been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and washed in the blood of the lamb and accept him so he can change your life, then you are guaranteed a place in the heavenly places that where God is preparing it. According to what the word of God says in the book of John chapter 14, the Bible says that, Behold, I'm going back to the Father to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you'll be also. In other words, when Jesus was going up to heaven, he says, this is not the end because I'm coming back again to take you so you can be with me that where i am there you may be also now today there's a lot of people especially some of uh, uh there's a uh, the cult church they say that uh we're not gonna go to heaven now if we're not gonna go to heaven why does the bible says that where i am there you'll be also now right now where is jesus where is jesus the bible says he went to be with the father where is the father the father is in heaven right now the father is in heaven technically is here is there is everywhere around the world but yet yes he's seated in the heavenly places where jesus is that's where all the believers are going to be so believe that now when we are talking about angels ladies and gentlemen angels how do angels look like and I know many people, you know, say they are, uh, if you look today, you look at the pictures of angels, you see these little babies in little diapers and with little wings hanging like a little uh, chickadee birds around and it says they are angels. Do angels really look like that? Do angels look like women? How do angels look like? There's all kinds of pictures. Now, sometimes the people just say, oh, if they're, a woman is so beautiful, my God, she looks like an angel. Is it how angels look like? Or maybe to make, uh, let me just even pose another question. Are angels female or male? Oh, wow. I get your thinking right there. I know I got your attention, but let's keep going anyway. So angels, really, angels of heaven, they are ministering spirits. 
they were created by God. For the Bible declares in the book of Job that where were you when the morning stars uh, sang, when God laid the foundation, when God laid the foundation of the earth, that's when he created angels. Now, there's all kinds of angels in heaven. There are angels that are the uh, Zoe's, which are creatures that are around the throne of God. And then they are ministering angels that uh, messengers that bring messages to the people of God. And then there are angels that are specifically like, uh, like cherubims, they guard the throne of God. But all these angels were created by God. They are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. In other words, if you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness, you're born again, you've received the Christ, Christ as your personal savior. When I say born again, it's a Pentecostal jargon that I'm using. What it simply means, it simply means you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. You've accepted Christ as your savior. You've chosen to follow God. Then we can call you that you are born again according to what the word of God says when Nicodemus came and Jesus said, except you be born of uh, the water and the spirit. That's what to be born again is to accept Christ. Uh, being born again is not something that you just use. It says, I'm born again, I'm born again. But the thing is, if you accepted Christ as your personal savior. So now, angels of heaven minister to the heirs of salvation to those people that have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light they're the ones that they minister to their servants of god they are um, ministering they minister to the heirs of salvation now we you and i we are not to obey we are not to worship angels like i've heard today there's many people that say command the angels for angels obey the word of god yes command them just say angel of this come here go to the left and bring finances wait a minute if you look at that the bible says when jesus one time when he was in the garden of gethsemane one time even when he was in the wilderness being tempted by satan what happened at that time the bible declares that god sent angels to minister to him I am not here to command angels. Angels are ministering spirits. God sends angels to help me. I'm not the one to stand up and there says, angel, go to my left. When you go like that, I used to be demon possessed. I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you go into spiritism where you begin to have a spirit guide, where you think it's the angels of heaven that are coming, but it's a spirit of darkness that you are, you are doing. That's why the word familiar spirit, the word familiar spirit, if you look at that, in the original what it means, it's like a, you have a spirit in your home, which is your servant, your servant. That spirit is your servant that you can call upon any time. And that spirit does whatever you want. Angels of heaven don't just do whatever you want. You ask God the Father. Then God the Father commands them to do what is supposed to be doing. Because when I used to be demon possessed, there were people, you can have angels, you can see a spirit guide coming and uh, you would talk to those spirits. And when you talk to the spirit, you can tell the spirit to do whatever you want. It's not like that with angels of God. Angels of God, they are holy. They obey the voice of God. They obey the word of God. And just because they obey the word of God, it doesn't mean I should stand up here and say, go to the left, go to the right, bring me cash. Wait a minute, because that's what we used to do in the occult you can send what was known as i i can't remember i think the english word is a little bit harder i know it in the african language it's like a jungle whale what it means is something that you uh you command all right if you want cash you want anything you can point to the east to the west as long as you do the incantations and the invocations then that spirit is going to go wherever you want it to go and it's going to bring whatever you want to bring but it's not like that with angels of god angels of god they're holy they obey the word of God. They follow God. They're ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. No. So what do these angels look like? Like we were talking. Do they look like little babies with little diapers around? No. Angels of heaven, in fact, they appear in three forms. The first one is that you can sense the presence of angels. Like right now I'm here. I can sense somebody even sitting next to me here. You can sense angels. That's one form that would come to you. You can sense their presence. Now, when I'm talking about angels, and I know there's some of you new age people there, you're speaking of your dead people, your dead loved ones, and you say they come to me, they speak to me. That's not, those are not angels. Those are spirits of darkness masquerading themselves as your loved one. Remember, the devil is a fabricator. He's not a creator. He simply tries to masquerade himself like something that is not and trying to come to you. That's how he operates. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about angels of heaven. 
all right angels of heaven that dwell with God that God sends to you so you can sense them and then they have a way that angels of God would appear they can appear in their glorified bodies for example you can see them in their glorified bodies and the glory of God will be uh, around about them because they are glorified beings they live with God they can come up in their glorified bodies and when they show up in their glorified bodies sometimes it might even scare you but anyway you have the peace of God so that's how first you can sense them secondly they can appear in their glorified bodies and the third thirdly they can simply appear like a man like I'm here right now I might just see a man walking from there and coming up here and sitting down here with me and uh, and talking with me and asking me question I, I might not even know that it's an angel of the Lord so angels can take different forms or shape now angels don't appear like uh, like spirits of darkness like the way they do you know uh, people who believe in new age uh, they see a dead mother who walking around and say I've come to help you those are spirits of darkness what they want to do they want to hook you up so when you buy into that then you get clean ons because demons are clean ons they'll clean on to you and therefore you get into mysticism and you get into spiritism and then as a result you get into necromancy and then you begin to sin against God so angels of heaven can appear as a man I remember years ago I think a lady was trying to talk a talk story right here and uh, she got stuck with a car it was winter time and it was about uh, maybe uh, minus 45 below and her car could not start and she was in the woods she didn't know what to do and she knelt down and she started to pray as she said a man from nowhere she saw a man from nowhere dressed in a suit coming to the lady and she felt so much comfort because the man looked so harmless and he said mom what's wrong and she started to cry I wouldn't start my car I don't know what's happening and the man says okay uh, open the hood so she popped the hood when the hood was open the man just touched the hood and she said start the car she started the car and the car was running and when she closed the wood and uh, she looked behind to see where the man was the man was not there he disappeared he was gone she wanted to go and say thank you so angels of God can appear and disappear at any time and God sends them especially to the heirs of salvation in the time of trouble in the time of need in fact the ones that when you are dying as a believer they come and escort you they come and escort you into the presence of God in other words they usher you into the presence of God if you ever been where people are dying especially in the non-believers many of them they cry I don't want to die because devils are coming to get them but the death of a believer is totally different because the angel of the Lord they're there to take them to usher them into the presence of God so angels do not appear and not like those little babies that you see with the little diapers and with little wings standing out there those are not angels those are just man-made things that people make and draw those things and then the other thing that about angels that uh, angels really they are they have so much strength they have so much power they have so much power for the Bible declares that angels exceed in strength they are quick like that uh, they are quick to do things and they exceed in strength and one time a man was stuck uh, I think he was trying to fix a an 18 wheeler big truck I don't know how many tons that was and he went down the truck and he was trying to fix and put a jack on the side but something happened that the jack uh, just collapsed and the truck hit the man on the chest and he just was there, he couldn't breathe and all of a sudden he saw, he saw these beings came and holding on to the truck and lifting up and the man came down when the paramedics came they were so surprised how the man came out and his chest was not crushed the man was okay how did that happen well it's called divine intervention it means God stepping out of his dimension coming into our dimension to help his people and using angels so angels are there they exceed in strength they can lift up anything they can do they have more power than humans they have supernatural power they are quick you know they're quick just like that they can do things like that That's, those are angels of heaven angels of heaven they exceed in strength and they escort us into the presence of God and you know angels ladies and gentlemen they are not a rest like we say you know I've heard many people in the charismatic churches they say oh when I die 
I'm gonna get my angels and I'm gonna get wings and I'm gonna be an angel when you as a human being dies you're not gonna be a glorified man to become an angel or like some people say in India this they say they turn into an ascended master because angels are not people who died who put on wings and then they become angels angels are a company that were created by God from the very beginning from the very foundation of the earth so we make a mistake to think that when we die then we become glorified uh, beings and we become angels because angels are separate they are not like a race of people but they're a company according to what the Word of God declares that angels are a company if you look in the Word of God it says and a company of angels and a company of angels and a company of angels angels are a company they are not a race they're not people who died now they become glorified like ascended masters but angels are ministering spirit to the heirs of salvation now many times angels would come to help the heirs of salvation in other words those of you that are in trouble because angels can come and minister to you God can send them even like where I am here you could be stuck in a place like this by yourself there's nobody here and maybe there's animals like a bear comes from there and trying to attack me and I'll be praying and all of a sudden I see a man running with a gun and I'm thinking oh where did he come from it could be an angel you know one time I think it was one of the brothers I can't remember which preacher who was trying to give a testimony I think in the US he was saying that one time they were flying the owners 747 Boeing as they were flying up in the air and the pilot came on and says, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're losing, we lost one engine. And then they lost another engine. And that plane was flying up. Now it became a glider. Now you know the plane is very heavy. You know what? I think, I don't know, maybe it's about 3,000 pounds or whatever, uh, tons. It's pretty heavy. And it's pretty heavy. And the plane is made out of like six, uh, six million parts. They're all non-flying things. But when it's put together, then they can fly. Now that thing is pretty heavy. Now, they lost the engine, it became a glider for a while, and when the preacher looked on the window, he saw an angel of the Lord holding on to a wing of the 747, a big being holding on to that wing. And that plane went and it was put up in the field as though somebody just took it from the sky and stuck it there no incidents whatsoever and all the people came out what was that it was divine intervention for angels of the lord they work for the heirs of salvation you might be in trouble you might be in situations that you don't understand how you're going to get out but when you pray god can send angels to come to you another story that i had many many years ago it was a lady that was uh she was going through many things you know like how we go through many things but listen for this you have to believe in angels you have to believe in them. They are there. They are there. Angels are there. Just because you don't see them, it doesn't mean they are there. For the Bible declares in the book of Matthew that some of you have entertained angels without even knowing. So now this lady, it was around Christmas time. I think it was somewhere in the state, somewhere there. And it was around Christmas time and she didn't have anything, no food whatsoever. The only thing she had in a kitchen was a hot dog in the freezer just one little hot dog and it's Christmas time now you know how Christmas time is in the Western world people go on a frenzy to shop and do all kinds of stuff around and if you don't have money you kind of feel left out but this lady was sitting there she just didn't know what to do she's thinking she has a little kid with her a single mom she's like God what am I gonna do she started to pray and she prayed and prayed and prayed and all of a sudden she heard a knock on the door and it was an old lady standing by the door the lady says, uh, excuse me, would you mind to come for dinner next door? She says, oh, yes, please, I would. So they entered into this apartment with an old lady. She sat with that old lady in that apartment. And the old lady brought all kinds of food there. The whole table was filled with a lot of stuff. There was turkey there, cranberry sauce, juices, name it, you know, desserts, cheesecakes, name it. All kinds of stuff. The table was staffed with lots of goodies right there desserts name it and after they ate and ate and ate and ate and when they finished eating and then the old lady said to this single mom she said all right you know i got containers over here so what you're gonna have to do is pack up some of the food so you can take it for your son and eat it later on so she took all containers and make sure she really packed it really good she had lots and lots of containers she packed the food 
and then they went to the apartment where she was living. It was just near to that lady, the old lady where she was. And she went there and I think about a week passed because the food was so much that it took about one week to finish the whole food. And when she had fully finished eating that food and then now it was time for her to return the containers. So she takes, she washes the containers and packs everything up and then she goes to the apartment where they had had dinner before. And she knocked on the door and there was no answer. She kept on knocking on the door, there was no answer. And she was wondering, it looks closed, all the curtains are drawn up and it looks like there's nobody there. So she decided she was going to go to the manager of the building, the, the building manager, the maintenance man. Then she went there and says, excuse me, uh, do you know that old lady that lives here? And uh, the manager looked at her and says, what are you talking about? Which old lady? He says, no, in that apartment, uh, we came and we had dinner in that apartment. Some lady uh, gave me some food and these are our containers. I'm trying to take them back. And the manager looked at her, the maintenance man, he says, you see, in that building, there's never been anybody living in that building. It's almost like six months. Nobody has been in that building there. But she says, no way. Don't tell me that because I ate there last week. I was sitting in that apartment. I was there. She says, no, we don't understand. What was that? Well, it's angelic encounters. It was God's divine intervention for the heir of salvation for somebody who was in trouble. She did not understand. She had to go back with the containers again. What am I saying? I'm saying no matter what you're going through right now, brother, sister, wherever you are, you might be lost. You might not know where to put your hand next, but I want you to know that there's divine intervention from another dimension. In this case, it's from God. God understands. God knows where you are. God knows where you are. He could send angels to do things. If things can go bad, that means things can go right. God is a supernatural God. He can change the minus into a positive. No matter how your situation is, remember, God is a supernatural God. I just want you to understand a little bit about the magnitude of God. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know that it is said, according to what the scientists tell me, that they say that the uh, closest galaxy to the Earth, it's about 2.5 million, million light years away, okay? 2.5 million light years away. Now, what does that mean? It means that when you are traveling at the speed of light to get to the closest galaxy to the Earth, it's going to take you about 2.5 million years to get there. Like if I snap the finger like this, all right? If I was snapping the finger like this, traveling at the speed of light, I'll be coming from New York to Paris, all right? To Paris, France, like this. That means I'll go from New York and to Paris and back in a snap of a finger. That's how fast light can travel. Now, traveling at that speed of light, it will take you 2.5 million light years to get to the closest galaxy. Look at that. This God is so great. It will take you million. That's the nearest. So the world is not just the little earth that we see. It's more than that. So to get to the closest, it will take you uh, 2.5 million years. And now to get to the furthest galaxy to the Earth, it will be for, for, uh, 13.5 billion light years away. 13.5 billion light years. Now think about 13 billion light years, years of traveling. So you have your kids, they are born and they die and the generation after generation, 13 billion, and that's the furthest. That's the only one that the scientists can measure up to. But the universe is so big, and this God we serve is a bigger God. And look at this. He's about 13.5 billion light years away, but yet is right here where I am in a river by the Hair River here, and he's right there in your home in Africa, right there in your home uh, in Japan, in Korea, wherever you are. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at the magnitude of God, God is so huge, God is so grand, God is transcendent, that there is nothing that you can compare God to. He's the omnipotent God, that means He's all-powerful. God is omnipresent, is found everywhere. Even though it's 13.5 billion light years billion far away from the earth that's the furthest galaxy that the scientists can even calculate but yet there are galaxies that are beyond that which they can't they have no instruments even to try and measure that 
But even there, God knows, for the Word of God declares that God is at the ends of the earth, meaning He's a great God. So no matter what you're going through, I want you to understand that God is greater than anything that you can think of, no matter how it is, no matter how hard. Remember, God is not limited, is not confined to time or space, is not confined to human limitation because he's a great God that we serve. So I want you to be encouraged. No matter what is happening right now, God can send an angel. No matter what situation, because no situation is permanent. Things can change. If things can go bad, that means things can be better right now. Now look at this again. The other fact is that there's about uh, uh, 7.5 uh, 7 billion people upon the surface of the earth. So in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in America, everywhere, all around the world, 7.5 billion people. But look at this now. Out of those 7.5 billion people that are upon the, the surface of the earth, God knows every one of them by name. He knows you. He knows me. He knows some guy out in Timbuktu somewhere. He knows some guy out in Australia in the hoods right now as I'm talking to you. He knows somebody who is in the jungles of Africa somewhere in a little heart that is troubled. God knows that. He knows you who is in America. He knows everybody who is in Australia. He knows everybody. What a God we serve. So don't try to limit God. Don't try and put God in a little box because God is greater than what you think. Because human limitations do not confine God. God is not confined to time or space. God is so grand, he's transcendent. He has no equals. Therefore, he can do what he says he would do. So no matter how things look like, I want you to be encouraged because God is a wonder-working God. He's a miracle-working God. There is nothing that God can not do. Now, the other thing is that they say, I am told, according to what the scientist says, that there's about um, eight point, uh, I think it's 8.4, somewhere there, uh, uh, species in the earth that are known species. Now, there's certain species that are not even known. Now, think about 8.4 million, actually, it's million. So then, among us, those, there are little animals, there's little, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff all together put that match. Now, if you count the total number of all species, it's so great. But yet, God knows every one of those by name. There could be a little sparrow over there crossing the little tree right there. God knows, and he knows he takes care of it. If God can take care of a little sparrow up in the woods there on top of the uh, mountain across the river, don't you think God can take care of you? Why do you limit God anywhere? God is great. There is nothing impossible with him. All things are possible to him that believe. Believe in God, and God can come through. Now, I am Conrad Santa, living in a changing world, with the changing people, with the changing times. And I'm presenting the unchangeable Christ, and I'm here in our river. Now, stay blessed again. Thank you so much, viewers around the world, for watching uh, Glory TV. And we'll see you next time, right here on Glory TV. I'm Conrad. Be blessed.